Uh, my goal was to overstand my welcome. Nailed it. No, Thanks I don't for having me. <laughs> I, think you, I think we could stay for another oh, hour. It's yeah. 63 minutes. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like the, the, those who are like, just like normal fans of your show are like, all right, all right, <laughs> you filled it up. There you go. He is the one, he is the only, Andrew Volpe. Uh, <laughs> Hello. What's up, Andrew? Not much. How are you doing? Great. We saw you rocking out through our intro. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm sometimes I'm just making B-roll for myself. <laughs> it's you important. Know, just for yeah. yeah. Well, welcome back. This is the most wonderful time of the year. It and is. we are so happy that we get to hang out with you only, oh my gosh, 10 days away from Halloween. I know. I know. It's the most okay. exciting time of the year. And so um, the question is, <clears throat> how does one prepare for being 10 days out for Halloween? Like, do we carb load? Are we supposed to eat lots of spaghetti, certain stretches? What are we supposed yeah. to do, Andrew? Yeah, you know, protein powder. Yeah. It, it's really, it really depends on your, uh, you know, your age and health bracket. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're young, you're just going to want to go in hard, make, make mistakes, and hurt yourself possibly – you know, just <laughs> learn some, you know, it's like that whole, you just basically go and just like the, the really pale person who just goes in like a little camisole to like the all day outside summer tour. And then they're like fried by the end and throwing mm -hmm. up. Like that's the choice that like younger people should make, but <laughs> older people should definitely stretch, should be doing a uh, spooky yoga. Um, yes. And just, you know, just really getting ready to, to hydrate and stay on top of it because it's going to be, it's going to be nonstop leaves changing color like in your hearts in a scary way so <sighs> leaves changing color what's that like from florida i, I don't know whether i've ever seen a season <laughs> yeah like your leaves just change into like anacondas or something oh <laughs> That's... it's it's just more alligators yeah <laughs> Not the same. <laughs> oh yeah this is so exciting okay dan i could take it away <gasps> well we're curious about uh, the Ludo's somewhat awkward acoustic sing-along, and we want to know what makes it so delightfully awkward. Um, well, I mean, usually you're supposed to like, try to mitigate the awkwardness on stage as a performer, and uh, we don't. We lean into it. We try to, we find those moments of awkwardness, and your first instinct is kind of like, keep it moving, be like, hey, everybody, woo, how right, but instead you're like, and you just sort of lean into it and you make it weirder. And um, I think it kind of gives the people in the crowd permission to be awkward because, you know, let's not mince words. They're really awkward people. Kind of gets. <laughs> but yeah, it just gets weird. You just kind of go with what you have and then uh, play some Ludo songs and high five. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. I like it. I wish I was there to be semi-awkward because I'm semi-awkward all the time or somewhat awkward, somewhat awkward. Yes. Okay. Um, another thing we wanted to ask about was the Ludo trivia thing um, in terms of preparation. So we already know how to prepare being 10 days away, but how does one prepare for the Ludo trivia thing? Should we start studying like Jeopardy questions? There's always like a Bible questions about the Bible at Jeopardy. So do we need to know what, what, what do we need to know? It's a, well, you know, I, I think a great place to start is to go uh, sort of hang out with the fans on uh, Facebook or other um, or other social medias, whatnot, and just jump into the conversations. Uh, also, you have to, you know, absorb and memorize our entire discography. Uh, it's it's going to be deep. Justin Parlett is, uh, is a good friend of ours, and he's running it all, and he's he's kind of a wizard with with such things and. Uh, it's going to be some deep Ludo stuff. I don't even know if I'm going to know all the answers, but like, that's kind of the best way to be, right? That, that's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask, how would you do at Ludo? You know that's a good question. I think I'm going to actually try it and see see how it goes. It might be, <laughs> it might not go well, but we'll find <laughs> out. You don't yeah. get first place and that, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, as we can all see from this delightful poster, uh, this year is clearly jam-packed. But yeah. um, 
what would you like to incorporate in future Halloweens that you have not mm. been able to do so far? You know, uh, we, yeah, we do have a ton of stuff this time that we're doing, and I'm like, super, we're all like super excited about it. But like, uh, I don't know, just more stuff because it turns out that in the same way that like, I guess our, because like maybe people are attracted to Ludo for some reason because possibly it's just like a giant basket full of random stuff that people <laughs> like. And so it's just like a really diverse pile of stuff. And it turns out that people who like diverse piles of stuff like diverse piles of other stuff too. So, we you know, stuff. why not, why not throw all this stuff in there? And, you know, for me, I love, so I love that there's going to be other performances, uh, comics and some good friends of ours and bands. And there's going to be like some Ludo themed uh, other events and stuff. Uh, but I would, I would love to see some like more of like a convention style thing mm. where we have like, uh like a, like a physicist could come in and talk about wormholes and like uh you know uh so a, a calligrapher could come in and talk about the, the history of gothic fonts uh <laughs> you know, it's just kind of the, the uh the sky's the limit on that stuff i mean just anything that might ever get mentioned by ludo ever let's have somebody come in and and talk about it we can lots just of different panels of experts i love that yeah, yeah. Have nothing to do with each other at all it's <laughs> perfect. perfect i feel like i don't know if he's still around but you mentioned like scientists and stuff is mr wizard still a thing can we bill nye the science guy i think he turned into bill nye yeah bill nye i think mr wizard like as he, he was, was dying sort guy. of just <laughs> like thinged like john carpenter thinged his way into bill nye That'd but yeah, cool. I mean, I'd, I'd love to have him around. Cool, mm -hmm. Bill Nye. I mean, Bill Nye for a while was doing the convention circuit. So like, it is not, nothing's off limits here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beekman. Oh, Beekman's world would be fun too. Beekman's That'd world. be great. There's love a guy, uh, 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 a YouTube channel I used to watch all the time called Vsauce. This guy out of Kansas City. He does like these really intense things where it's like, you know, what would actually happen if you drove, if you like flew into a black hole and like does like these extensive like, actual um uh just descriptions of, of how that how it would all play out and uh so i like that i like that so it'd be like science stuff and language stuff and art stuff and i don't know just kind of anything we can think of okay um slightly off the beaten path here so you mentioned um black holes so i'm thinking space mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. if you andrew volpe were given the opportunity to go to space um, with or without Jeff Bezos, he can stay on the ground. Would yeah. you take said opportunity? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Can I do it with like without like getting in trouble online for having used? Uh, like, can I do it? Okay, could I do it with like zero carbon footprint? Yes. Is that possible? We'll pretend like yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I would do it. Okay. I would absolutely oh, do it. Great questions for Neil deGrasse Tyson, who should be another one of your panelists. Exactly. No, I totally <laughs> agree. I totally agree. I, I think some of my favorite clips to come out of this past year were William Shatner going up into space and just like, oh, wow. I mean, he <laughs> had the best. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a little us. scared. I'm, I'm a little, I, I would be a little he hesitant, Andrew. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, yeah, I, I've been scuba diving before and that there were definitely moments of like, I don't belong here when I was mm -hmm. down there. Uh, but I, I think it would be like that. But, um, I don't know. I watched that that Hubble documentary that they played at like IMAX theaters around the country at science places oh, yeah. uh, for a long time with Leonardo DiCaprio narrating. Actually, I bought it and I like I watch it at home. It's a forty five minute movie, and I watch it entirely sober. And I just go, "Oh my god!" You're like flying into like a nebula, like because it's all the Hubble photography, like in like three dimensions. You can like fly into it. To like you know uh, thousands of light years away and it's uh yikes <gasps> it's amazing but also terrifying wow leonardo dicaprio and hubble my two favorite things I don't yeah know. i don't <laughs> leo is fine you can see anything. <laughs> <laughs> well jumping back to hello doing so um, can you, uh, mentioning back to this poster, can you break down Ludo land for us? So what, what can we expect? Are we looking for like the dumpster out back or making more like haunted maze? It's a good question. Uh, Ludo land is, is where we've always done sort of like the, uh, all of our merchandise and everything and all the, uh, random 
and, and so we have like people come there and we meet people there. Um, it's like the most efficient way of like getting to meet everybody and hang out. Um, and we, in the past, we've also had um, certain uh, like artists and, and other sort of vendors available there to do cool stuff, including someone who's coming back this year, Dr. Dan Cakes. Are you familiar? <laughs> Austin Pancakes? Okay. Dude makes anything, any picture you could possibly imagine as a pancake, and then you can eat it. It looks amazing. You like make your face out of a, out of pancake, and then you eat it. And so, like people like go through and order those. Um, yeah. See, we just we do lots of of of, of, of strange stuff. And I would I would request something ludicrous, like like a Vermeer painting. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Premiere, okay. Yeah. And there are people talking about spooky yoga. So, what makes it so oh, yeah. spooky? Uh, honestly, like just the fact that it's October, nearing Halloween, and you just don't know if there's going to be a murderer or you know that kind of thing. So it's like it's like Zen with sort of these the maybe getting murdered overtones. Maybe you won't survive the winter. Just these thoughts in the back of your mind as so you anxiety. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But the centerpiece, <laughs> yes, Alicia, that is correct. The centerpiece of this yoga will be Matt Palermo, or Pimo, as he is affectionately known. He has become like, I think his official title is level 17 monster guru. I don't know. I, it's some, um, I made that up. He's really, really knows a lot about yoga stuff. He can like... He has these uh, techniques he does where he's like, I can change my body temperature by oh. like putting a bird sound into this finger and then <laughs> and like he mm -hmm. says he can't levitate, but I mean You've never not levitate. seen him do it, right? Right. People <laughs> who levitate generally don't like go, I can levitate except right. for some fakers. Um but uh, this angel, yeah. we're looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we some fans down some some really dark, twisted, flexi paths. Good for them. I yeah. yeah. My my That's mom's cool. into yoga. I feel like she would love spooky yoga. That sounds so fun. Mm -hmm. I feel like you don't do do yoga either of you. Um, I have been known to. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> I have done it as well. I don't know. I mean. You guys seem like really well adjusted. Like you seem like you're getting all the the stretchy flexibility out, out of life that you, you need. You seem so. I don't know. Whereas I, I feel like I'm just more of a neurotic mess. It's, it's I, need to be like out meds. I feel like the word "seem" is the key yeah. word here. We yeah. Seem yeah. I am shining my heart right now, but yeah, yes. I don't know what that I'm, means. It's truly really because I'm just on anxiety meds. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. It's the same as yoga. Yeah. Exactly. Same piece of Imagine if I put the two together, I would just be a lump on the couch. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, you know, but you know what? There are worse ways to, to spend your time than I'm being sure. a lump on the couch. And I, you do think, I do think it's possible that the moment you're off camera, especially you, kid, kid, I think you go from, all right, to just. She's dark. In a mile. <laughs> you know me. No, no, no. a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't feed me after midnight because that's. Oh God, I've seen no. <laughs> I love that. I recently rewatched Gremlins Two: The New Batch, and I am such a huge fan of the scene in the control room. Uh, that was actually I remember that was the part one of the trailers for that movie before it came out. Anyway, they're making fun of. The, the idea of feeding them after midnight and like, cause like they're mocking Billy as he's like explaining it. And he's like, Oh, what, in what time zone? Or like, what if they eat before midnight, but they have a little something in their teeth and they swallow it afterwards. And the other guy's like, Oh, what if you're in an airplane? Going? And then the gremlin bursts out. And it's like such a well done movie. So fantastic. It is. I mean, and Hulk Hogan's in it. So what could be wrong? Yeah. Nothing. Absolutely right. nothing. They broke like the fourth wall seven times. Right. And great. Jude's asking if you've seen the Gremlins 2 Key and Peel skit, which is one of the greatest it's things. Magic. In the no, is there one? It's Andrew. 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 Fucking brilliant. Andrew. Okay. All right. Let me write <laughs> this down. Just yeah. the hang comedy. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to give it any any of it away, but it is yeah. brilliant and it breaks it's, down the movie. It's a little too on point. Yeah. It's so good. It's great. It hurts That's real good. good. Do you guys have a favorite gremlin? Um, I Spike like Spike's good. I like my daughter 
really likes the brain gremlins. Like, oh, civilized, civilized. Like, oh, yeah, like, with the glass. Yeah. He's cute. Um, I, over the years, like when I need to pull out like a, like a really obscure insult, and like it, it usually doesn't play well because most people are like, what? what are you talking about? I'll see a woman who like, if she's being a jerk or something, she kind of, like there are people out there who actually look like the, the girl gremlin. Uh, and like so, and, and I'll be like, "She's hmm, a girl," and people are like, "I don't know what that mean." And I'm like, "Oh, I wish you knew, because it's so good." Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't, oh, the gargoyle. Oh, the gargoyle. Yeah, the gremlin. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go with Batwing. Batwing gremlin. Well, that's him. That's him. That's oh, the same one. Him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great choice. Okay. I love it. Love it's it so fantastic. much. Um, I just like to like because he has cool hair. <laughs> Yes, that's great. Um, weird side thought, because once again, we're talking all things Halloween. Andrew, mm -hmm. um, if you're not aware, starting today, the McDonald's Halloween pails are back. Any what? thoughts? Really? Yes. They're not exactly the same, but they do have that hint of nostalgia. Hmm. I'm going to check it out. Because usually, I feel like the thing that I loved about things like that, it's usually like that they use the wrong plastic or something and it smells really weird or like mm -hmm. something about it, like, oh yeah, that. And so <laughs> like 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 and they make it without poison. And I'm like, oh, that's not how it used to be. But uh, <laughs> right. that's exciting. Those were big in like what, early nineties? Oh yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty huge. I remember uh, my daughter recently came home with these little like toys that went like, that's like they scrunch together these tubes that scrunch together and then they like, whoop, stretch out like an accordion oh. style. Okay, oh. I was oh, like, those are Dude, music popoids. Those are popoids, and like they were given as toys. No, 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 no. It's 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 like a it's just literally a tube that's like yeah. accordion out and like stretches and it goes. Yeah. And yeah. they were called popoids, and McDonald's gave them away. And I did, I forgot they existed. And she's like, nah, they're not called popoids. They're called stretchy, whatever. I'm like, no, they're called popoids. <laughs> Nobody believes me. Oh, man, isn't nostalgia just the best? It is. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like this is a good segue back into our next question. Because I wanted to show this poster because Danica and I have been talking about it. We love yeah. it so much. It's giving us all the vibes of Woodstock, um, obviously, right? Yeah. So I, I say we take a few moments to reflect on what was Woodstock 99, which was the biggest. Oh, yeah. in its that shit. didn't go well. <laughs> no, it didn't, did it? No, it's one of those things that, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, you try to, you remember something being a certain way, but it worked a certain way because it happened in that context. And then you try to do it again. And it's just like, er, er, er. it's like, that <laughs> doesn't work. It's kind of like, you know, that guy who's like, I don't know, like you're, I really, oh God, I had so much fun swimming earlier today. And then you run out and like you jump, it's the middle of the night and it's freezing. You jump in the pool and it's like, oh, this is not fun anymore. <laughs> uh, so I, yeah, that didn't go well. Um, I would have rec, I, I felt weird about it. I didn't think it was going to go well, but. You know what it reminded me of? It's like because it's like self-aware kind of marketing. Because when it happened at the time, no one was like, "We're gonna do Woodstock now." It was just like, "We're gonna do this thing called Woodstock," and then it became Woodstock, right? But then marketers go, "Let's recreate it. Let's do Woodstock except now." And it reminded me of things that used to bother me about the way Britney Spears was. Uh, treated by her handlers or, or mm. team like or whatever. Where yeah. It reminded because I remember like when Madonna was writhing on stage at like the MTV Awards or the Grammys or something in a wedding dress and it, like, or like Prince did something crazy. It was like, also, it was spontaneous. And then these marketing people decided like, let's create these spontaneous, but let's make the revolution part of the machine. Like, and <laughs> it just felt, it just feels weird. And like, I feel like we've seen a lot of that in, uh, like, over the past like 30 years. And I don't know, it just gets grosser every time I see it. Like, there's yeah. like when, it, when, they're, when the artist isn't owning it, it's not coming from them. It's like, she's got the snake on her, but like there's terror in her eyes. Or like, it's <laughs> like, oh God, I remember another example around that time was like that, that Super Bowl thing with Janet Jackson and Justin oh, yeah. Lake. Oh, like, it just it was, all, it was so contrived. They're trying to create a scandal, right? And like, <laughs> Yeah. I, gross. I just watched an entire three-part documentary about that. So that's oh, a whole other really? thing now. Wow. Yeah, I need, I need more information on that. 
Janet like denies it. She will bring that to her grave that that was not supposed to happen. But it wasn't supposed to happen. Right, but like, how do you design the exact shirt and purchase the exact under thing for it? I was gonna say, then how did she know to wear a sparkly? They they bought it for her. They have the receipt of the exact. Right, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've sat in enough rooms where people design what are supposed to seem like spontaneous Mm -hmm. moments um, Mm -hmm. to know that it's just, I don't know. It's it's very, they don't, no one leaves room for spontaneity anymore just because (laughs) they think they can make it in advance. Like that's exactly what makes it grow. Don't do it. I know. Life is so weird. But speaking of spontaneity, something that does include actual spontaneity is haunted houses, right? We love love haunted houses. So if Ludo was to have a haunted (laughs) house, what elements would you like to see inside? Oh, wow. Uh, I would like, I feel like there's, uh, there's like a lot of bigger, 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 uh, sort of approaches to haunted houses are like scarier, scarier, scarier. So they start off like scary and foreboding and then they get worse and worse. And then, and at a certain point it's like, ah, I kind of, what I like better is when it looks like safe and then it's horrifying. So I'd like to see some, some setups like Ludo themes where like you feel like you're in some safe section of like some little square, but then you round a corner and there's something horrifying just standing right there. You know what I mean? Like where they don't telegraph it. That's mm-hmm. what I, so I, to me, it would be like lots of sort of nice harvest festival type decorations and stuff. And you're like, oh, this is nice. Like bobbing for apples. And then you round a corner and there's just like this thing in the corner looking at you and you're like, what? what? And then it like runs at you, like that sort of stuff. Right. And, and it was Tim the whole time. We're like, right. Tim, yeah. what are you doing in here? <laughs> Yeah, no, I fill in the blanks with literally anything mantra rays with like like braces or uh, you know like knives and and that 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 bring lawsuits on you whatever it is like it just get the craziest stuff it's just but it's more about like the flow and the tone it's like everything's fine and then boom but if you show up at a haunted house and it's like there's a baby's head on a spike outside it's like. Well, obviously, there's some stuff going on in here that's going to be terrible. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, don't show me the shark yet. Don't show yeah. me the shark. Right. Oh, my I ideal, I think, my ideal haunted house is just like it looks like a totally normal house, like like someone's suburban, exactly. you know, 1980s wood paneling, bad lighting, pink tile, um, and that's it. That's it. There's that something it. scary. It's just the house. It's oh the house. god! <laughs> you just you get you have to be part of the 1980s again on <laughs> all of the brown. <laughs> and then, so like, oh my god, I'm with you, and you're like, kind of this is so weird. But then like, you're like, oh, okay, well, and this is because you're weird expecting whatever. like something right. bad to happen, and like nothing happens. You're like, oh, I I psyched myself out the whole time. I was expecting what if, horror. What if, what if there was a way to end it with like? There's a mirror on the way out, and you go to the door to get out, and there's no there's no hardware, there's no way to get out. And you look in the mirror, and you're a 1980s person, and it's like <laughs> huge hair. This is your mom. <laughs> you guys ever watch uh, Nathan for You? Yes. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I love it. I love. Did you see the haunted house one he did? I have it. He, he wanted to make it. <laughs> can I spoil? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. He wanted to make a truly <laughs> terrifying haunted house, so he. He had, um, he changed it so like these people went in there and uh, they, they had like this this actor jump out to scare him or whatever. And uh, like, the, they're like, oh my God, wait, did you touch them? I, I didn't mean to touch you. Like they stopped, they turned the lights and everything. And the woman's like, I have a disease. It's this, this, this it's, and the actor like from the house was like, oh my God, I didn't mean to touch you. And it's like, holy crap, she has this really rare disease. And like, they had to like take them to this like hospital and like to like make sure that there, there wasn't contamination. And they like, Got them all freaked out about actually like you might have contracted this terribly rare disease and that they were going to sue the haunted house and everything. And then it ends with them like go, they're going to like tell their family that what happened. They, well, anyway, they end up back at the haunted house like you did it. You made it through. Like, it was really? so oh, that is so like I, I yeah. love the um. what was it? Shitty Starbucks? Is that oh, uh, dumb Starbucks? Dumb Starbucks. <laughs> so good. So- 
Yeah, he's he's a genius. He is. Oh. Okay. Well. All right. So on a completely different note. <laughs> Ooh, Nick Cage Grand House. Yeah. See, oh, oh yeah. See, Jude, I have to look at my notes, man. See what. <laughs> That's what you guys want. You want to hear me say, you want to you hear, I want to talk about like the actual things that would be in the house, but like my brain doesn't work that way. I would populate it with the Lake Ponchy train skeleton stuff later, but like mm -hmm. start with dynamics. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I also wanted to mention that a, a really fabulous meme that I've seen going around is like, it's a haunted house, except that it's just a Walmart populated with everybody you didn't like from high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that would be, uh, That'd be bad. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> I can't really it. So anyway, yes, on a completely different note, um, uh, going back to Halloween, um, uh, we noticed there is post-show karaoke on Sunday. Oh, but the yeah. more important question is, what is your go-to karaoke song? One More Try by George Michael. Oh, George Ooh. Michael. Oh, heart. Lots of really good singer. Yeah. Really good singer. And I don't remember people talking about him being a great singer. I'm like, like, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously he's a vocalist, so people are like, yeah, he's a pop. But like, I mean, he was, he wasn't like one of the, known as like, oh, he's one of the voices. Mm -hmm. that he does. He really does have. Yeah, he's voice. his song "Freedom" has recently made it back on my Spotify. Oh, so. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's a good song. And and that's a song I could put on if I'm having like kind of a an off day, and yes. it makes me want to like. I don't know. It's it's a it's a really good song. Anything, George. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm into it. Just like a, there was like a surprising listening as a kid. You don't really think about it, but then like you get older, like, God, there's a lot of soul in there in that dude. Yeah. Oh. What about you guys? What's your what are your go tos? Oh, Danica, you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Um, you go I can, first. I can tell all of yours, and you can tell all of mine. Okay, yeah. I, I do. Um, Jackson Five. Yes. Um, Which one? Uh, no, I don't want that. I want you back. Jackson. Yes, that's the best Jack. And I, I switch it up a little, and I usually do Highway to Hell from ACDC. Mm -hmm. And I switch it one more time and either do, like, Celine Dion, It's All Coming Back to Me Now, or I'll throw in a little Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody. So, that, yes. to yeah. Danica? Fantastic. Danica. Um, uh, the one that I usually go to first is Hook from Blues Traveler. Okay, she, yeah. She... Um, Nails it. And then everyone goes, woo! When you do the fast part. <laughs> yeah. So you you get get right? Yeah. 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 Um, it's really good. And uh, what was what did I do yesterday? Regina uh, Spector oh, is very good. Open hearted from Carmen. Yeah, that's good. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And then uh Valerie, Amy Winehouse. Um mm -hmm. yeah. We we try to keep it diverse and you know, keep people on their toes. I always I also like I do uh I like to do run around Sue. <gasps> oh, really yeah. Cool. And you can also do lots of like vocal uh, nub nubs in there. Like you know, that's fun. Uh, and uh, "Glory of Love" from Karate Kid Part Two soundtrack. Yes. Winner. Uh, I like. Sometimes I like singing um, "Lion A Circle of Life." <laughs> oh, there you go. No, all, the, all of that. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what we didn't mention though is that the one that we usually duet, which oh. is Take Me or Leave Me for Brent. Yeah. That's that, awesome. It, it's a real moment when Danica and I are singing show tunes in a very public forum and people are <clears throat> very confused. I love um, that. Keep, oh, I do that. I do some I do some lames too. <gasps> oh. Uh <laughs> it depends how drunk I am. If I, uh, if I, if I, if I'm drunk, I'll do it on my own. I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll, I'll reach for some eponine and obviously use my head voice, but like, uh, <laughs> I always thought you to be more of a cosette, but you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I she's a soprano. Nah. Oh my gosh. I love, I feel like we need to karaoke now. Cause it sounds like the most fun night well, of also, all. Yeah. Have to bring Corey Taylor with you. Oh yeah. Well, wait, when are we going to, when are we ever, are you ever going to come to a, sh a St. Louis show with the Halloween, I mean? That'd be fun. Okay. We'll have to plan it. <laughs> know. Conventions are, especially around this time of year, it's tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, so. Yeah. You got that. Yeah, I was watching, I was watching your, uh, the, the intro again. Um, you guys have just been doing so many interviews. We have and, not and, stopped. And running around. Yeah. We run around Sue. Yeah. Exactly. But 
We are, I, I mean. Which is her right, by the way. If she wants okay. to run around, that's fine. Yeah. Her her she she right. like says she's not going to, and then that's just like shady and lame, but like. Right. He's a little possessive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Keep away from my run around. Wow. Like, what do you know? What do you know? Um, so also, every year you guys dress up in costumes. Uh, can you give us any insight into what you guys might be dressing up for in one of these shows? Oh. I, I, I mean, we typically dress like skeletons at some point, at least. Um, yeah, true. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, we actually haven't discussed it yet. So okay. I'm, I'm leaving for St. Louis on Friday. Okay. We're all going to meet there then, and then. I think we're going to figure some stuff out, but, uh, cause we are mostly, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure because a lot of it's going to be like broken bride focused the oh, rock cool. opera because we, what's special about these shows is we're going to play the entire rock opera broken bride from start to finish, which is not something we normally do. Uh, often because first of all, it's hard cause then I have to play the piano, but second of all, like, then like er there's a lot of people that cry at the end and then like, a lot of people like don't really want to do a lot of rocking after they go down that hole. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, okay. it's kind of weird normally, but we're doing it this time because we like to make people cry when during scary season. Why? Why not? A little misdirect, right? Like, yeah. oh, oh my God. You know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay, and another question would be obviously, no. you know, how many wins only get? <laughs> It's, it's only getting bigger and bigger every year. So if you can incorporate any band into a future Halloween, who would it be? And I guess Resurrection's not off limits if we needed to. Yeah, the zombie version of, you know, Jim Morrison. Oh my gosh. Me personally, geez -o -rama. I mean, I would love to do like a squirrel nut zippers. Oh. Like a, like a, like a, a barn harvest festival type thing. 1930s situation uh a bunch of like old timey times uh that would be um, my daughter listens to this guy called corpse who uh sounds like a demon i guess that would be appropriate i don't think his lyrics are appropriate though but. Oh, okay corpse uh sounds like a demon okay uh uh i mean rob zombie that'd be fun oh yeah Guar. oh Okay. I, I feel like, I feel like <laughs> that's like really intense. That like, I don't know. Maybe that's like eating jalapenos with your ice cream. Like, I'll do it though. I've seen it done. I'm <laughs> I feel like maybe people would be like, "Whoa, all that guar and that Rob Zombie just totally washed over all the Ludo stuff because so spicy." And it's like, I like them both, but like maybe not together. I don't know. Here's the problem, right? You start with guar, Andrew, and people are just going to be covered in substances, and then they need to go shower. Right. So you'd have to have them on a different day, I feel like. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like you you're bring right. them in a different stage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I don't think I could survive guar for the stickiness alone. <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like, it's like Gallagher for the rest of us. <laughs> I met Gallagher and it was one of you? the best days of my life. I, I met Gallagher at a random like comedy show 10 years ago. And I saw this guy and I'm like, he looks like a grandpa. And like, I didn't necessarily like recognize him without the mallet. And everyone's like, that's Gallagher. And so I had to get a picture. It was like Gallagher in the wild. Just that's amazing. <laughs> that's one of those things that like, you don't think about when you're young, but then like you watch it again. You're like, wait, was that really just what he did? That was like his show. And then you watch people in the crowd are like, yes, 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 shit, yes. And it's like, I mean, he's making like somewhat clever insight, but it's, it's just, it's just I, don't, I don't know. I don't get it, but it's, it's fantastic. I love that. Pe I don't, I, th I don't personally go, oh my God, this is so fantastic, but I love that it exists. And I love that there's people who love that. Right. It's great. Maybe he's available. Like I'm thinking between yes. Ludo, maybe Guar Gallagher Ludo. Like yeah, yeah. Or do you even like a, you know? Let's think, maybe tone it down a little bit. Try to get real big fish up and up in the club. <gasps> That'd be fun. That'd okay. Be fun. So like no lie, next weekend. Um, I, I kind of feel bad saying this now because I should be at Halloween, but I'm going to see Smash Mouth. Um, <laughs> so. <I> <laughs> 
Body. <laughs> yeah. Um, the new singer is so cool, uh, Zach Goody. He is awesome. I, I would like, you know, maybe you bring Smash Mouth in for one. You never know. Oh, maybe get some Shreks walking around. I would very much like that. Whoa. I would really enjoy that. Wait, what? What about you? Well, who do you think we should have besides, besides obviously Smash Mouth? Um. Okay. So, so the question is like, are we going like for realsies or for play play? Because th that's a two totally different conversations. Like, if we're doing for oh, for realsies, for realsies, yeah. all American rejects. I don't know. Um, first thing that came to mind. Okay. okay. Who do, who do, will um, they play okay. along though? Are they? Will they go Hallow? Will they go full bore Halloween? Yeah. My my real answer though, this is my real answer, is Bowling for Soup. That's my real answer. Ooh, well, they would totally be down. Yes, yeah, that guys. is my that is my answer. Ooh, Those guys would totally. Good. Good. Yeah, I was actually gonna say Presidents. <gasps> we toured with them as well, and yeah. they were so great. They were so great. They were Chris so Ballou? great. Chris What's Ballou? that? Chris Ballou? Is that yeah. his name? The singer yeah. of Presidents? Yeah. I never remember how to pronounce that. Yeah, he, yeah, I remember Baby Beluga. That's what stuck in my head. He now, like, lives on an island off Seattle or something. And mm. <laughs> Don't we all, though? Yeah. <laughs> and he, he was doing the child's album, Casper Babyface, I think was his name, that he was doing for a while. That's, so that's maybe that's for, like, early in the day. Then you do Presidents, Bowling for Soup, Blue. Yes. Girl. Yes. Perfect. Well, I mean, now, now that we're all mostly all having babies and stuff uh like i mean i feel like and the fans are keep having babies i feel like maybe we should start doing some ludo kid stuff i i don't <laughs> don't hate it, hate it. <laughs> that would be here's so how you wake up in the morning brush your teeth don't be mean to your mom <laughs> you pick that up off the floor contribute get a job please you make so much money <laughs> yeah yeah, A, B, C, there's consequences for your actions. <laughs> this is this is great. H have you heard the um the lullaby versions of like uh like metal bands or whatever? Like Slipknot has like baby songs. It's, no, that sounds amazing though. No? It is, it Real is fun. great. It's very soothing, surprisingly, for Slipknot. Um <laughs> yeah. Okay, Danica, why don't you ask one more? I'll ask one more and then we'll go to the game. Well, we have to bring up uh, this fabulous image. So this is one of the cool ones. But, <laughs> but what was your favorite costume growing up? Uh, God, let's see. What did I say? I was like, he does a great, um, who did I mention when I saw this? Uh, it's not Gloria I, Stefan. Oh, fuck. What, what did I say? It's I really funny. I'm sure, I'm sure it was great at the time. That kid with tinfoil on does a really great Gloria Stefan. What Danica was? <laughs> I was trying to be hilarious. And um, I was like, it's a great, I don't remember who I mentioned. Honest summer? I don't know. I want to get this so badly. It sounds like the best joke. I, it was pretty good. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I got I got the. Uh, I wanted Donna to Summers. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that works for me. It's like that kid does a really good Donna Summer. <laughs> My sister standing next to me is Brunhilda, the opera singer. Oh, with the and the show. Show. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't know. One year I went as a great white. That was pretty great. <laughs> uh, one year I went. And everybody does the old man thing. Uh, uh, I, I kind of what I gotta say. I think my favorite was going to Santa Claus. You would be amazed, and this was before Nightmare Before Christmas came out. The mm -hmm. amount of love that I got for that costume out trick or treating was like greater than anything I've ever experienced. Oh, uh, smart! It was people just big fans, big fans. And Santa's pretty popular. <laughs> you know, as a brand. <laughs> What's not to like? Yeah, yeah it's fair. As I mean, a Jew, I, even I embrace. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I love well, him. There's, sure, we could get into. You could really find something that's white patriarchy or like, uh, you know, just like gender things. Mrs. Claus making cookies or animal <laughs> abuse with the reindeer or uh, subjugating an entire race of mythical <laughs> beings just because they're short and can make toys with their nimble fingers or. Breaking into houses and you know, 
leaving unmarked boxes around your tree at night or bending the laws of space time without any sort of sense of responsibility for what the effects of that might be or I don't know, representing Scandinavian countries as uh, yeah, there, are, there's, there's, there could be some issues, but I, I mean, I'd mostly say that he's just, he's, he's very kind. Yeah. And he loves Coca-Cola. And so do I. Yes, so do polar bears. If you know. Can Sorry, we now all I can think of is the new David Harbour movie that's coming out, Violent Night. I've seen I've seen uh, that trailer. I was a fan. Was it, is, <laughs> so is it actually going to be good? I think it is. Think it or so be. bad it's good. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Speaking of of trailers uh, or like new movies coming out, I just heard a bunch of chatter recently about a movie called Terrifier Two. Yeah, um, our guest oh, that we have on next month or next Tuesday. Yes, yeah. let's talk. Really? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It might be like above my just hanging out watching movies normally pay grade it might be my like my i'm gonna watch horror like thing but that's where i have to go for it it sounds like impressively terrifying it is People so wonderful the kind of thing so okay i i feel blessed enough to call them friends of mine that's and I, I i got to see a clip of it a, a couple months back it was like a seven minute long scene that's in the movie. And it was the most impressive practical magic and or practical magic, practical okay. makeup. Okay. Oh. And also mm -hmm. the way that the guy plays Art the Clown is like outstanding. Yeah. That I, my only emotion was hysterical tears. I was in hysterics crying so much. Wait, 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 wait. Come Where did the tears come? Like what, what sort of tears were they? just utter disbelief that they could create something that incredible they are amazing so like, simply from like a crafts point a crafting point of view it's just brilliant and must be seen it is like damien the guy that wrote it directed it also does all the practical makeup effects he is a genius and uh david howard thornton who plays art the clown is a genius and lauren lavera who is the main final girl is so brilliant like it Everything is so perfect, but it is very graphic and gory. I went to yeah. go see it in a theater and people were literally screaming. And I don't right. know the last time I've seen something like that. So, right. Well, that's, I mean, I've heard lots of fake marketing about other movies about that, but that sounds, it seems like it, people are genuinely getting, you know, terrified. Yeah, they they are that. handing out barf bags in theaters. So, oh, that's, it's real. It's so good, that's, though. That's amazing. You know what, though? Like anybody who can, put in that level of craftsmanship and, and like, I mean, there's, there are movies that I recently showed uh, my daughter monster squad. Oh, yeah. And we like, you know, we skipped some of the dialogue that turned out to really not age well, but like uh, that nothing to like about that movie in terms of acting direction or anything like that. But my mm -hmm. God, the creature effects and everything, it's just nails. The lighting is nails. The, like the monsters are nails. It's just practical effects. And obviously it's gotten, the world's gotten better since then, but like that, I mean, the lighting in gremlins, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's like perfect. And, and to me, uh, when you can nail that, I mean, obviously story is king. At the end of the day, your story's got to be good and you've got to be able to tell it properly. But man, there are still movies that stick with me just because of being able to nail things like that. So I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. That Give me the amulet, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Yeah. I'm just using uh, like like anti-gay slurs for like the first like 10 minutes of the movie is like 15. I'm like just I know somebody pitches is like it'll be like Goonies meets E.T. except with Halloween monsters and we'll we'll keep the language a little more cutting edge and fresh and like but no, not the trademark yes. monsters. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you know that scenario too, right, Andrew? They they lost the trademark for the Universal monsters, hence why it's Gilman and why Frankenstein, instead of having the bolts on his neck or on his head, and yeah, it's it's. I did not know that story. See, this is why I have to come on this program. I'm entirely poorly read on 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 such trivial topics. I need I need this information. We're oh, Wolfman's got nards. Yes, I love it. Yeah, Wolfman does have nards. <laughs> 
Um, real quick, just so you know, I have here. Um, this is on my Christmas playlist. <laughs> Hold on. Did it it do? Always Coca Cola. <laughs> and there's like, there's a polar bear drinking. I do love the polar bears. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense, but um, because in reality, polar bears are, are brutal killers. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they can't have carbonated beverages or caffeine. Or and they also much. have, um, I, I forget what it's, something about their eyelids. They're like see-through or something. I forget, but there's something about polar bears' eyelids. Interesting. Huh. I know. Really? Also, yeah. Mm. I have to, I'll, I'll Google it. I, I apologize. There's so much light falling. Oh, wait, no, not in the dark times. Let's Not see. in their winters, because they, they would be dark there for like 20 hours a day. Yeah. Polar bear see. eyelids. We're learning so much here. Non-occluded? Um, are they non-occluded eyelids? They are clear inner eyelids called, I don't want to say that word wrong. They are clear. Face wipers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, crazy. Imagine they're like shark, like the ones that, uh, yeah. no, alligators. Alligators have those. Mm. Like the third eyelid. Yeah. It comes over from the side. Yeah, mm. that's cool. Creepy. Yeah. I love it. Well, um, I apologize. I know my internet's being a little choppity doppity, so my apologies. But we're going to go to the game right now. Okay. So this is their game of Would You Rather, Andrew. You've played it before. You're going to play it again, and you're going to do just as great. So, Danica, okay. why don't you get this party started? Oh, all right. Would you rather eat an anatomically correct candy eyeball or eat a candy cake, a uh, cake, bleh, or eat a candy flavored like rotting pumpkins? The eyeball is made entirely of candy? It is. It just looks... That one! Don't no care. You know, tell me <laughs> correct. Candy eyeball. Tastes delicious. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Put your eye in my mouth. <laughs> Yummers. <laughs> okay. Here's the next one. We love these. These are so fun. Would you rather oh, dress up as, as Juice Demon for Halloween? Yes, that is Juice <laughs> Demon. Or dress up as the pubescent frog of silent war? For Halloween. Uh, you know. um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I think we all know that I'd be the creepy best in frog of Silent War. Okay. Very good. It's got Excellent. a nice ring to it. Hold on. This can't possibly just be trying to avoid copyright. That has That's to have been translated into Japanese and then back, right? One can only hope. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite versions of that uh, was, I remember I had these tops car, or they, no, I had these cards, these uh, garbage pail kits. <gasps> yes! And inside there was, there was an ad for Ring Pop, except, I, and I remember reading this and trying to figure out why this was the slogan for Ring Pop. It was, the most exciting new lollipop idea for fun since the invention of candy. <laughs> what? That's excessive. It I, was translated from Japanese. It didn't really work. Um, I love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really good. Though. It's an inefficient way to say it. But but it's very <laughs> accurate, but it's just not catchy. The most exciting new lollipop idea for fun since the invention of candy. Although other lollipop ideas have been pretty good. Hi, Pee Wee. I do love Pee Wee. <laughs> well, the, the word, wait, what's the secret word? I don't know. I, I do a terrible Pee Wee impression. I'm not even going to try it. All right, Danica, read the next one. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather? Go through a haunted house themed after Weird Al or go through a haunted house based on my girl. <laughs> it's just bees. The whole house is just filled with bees. Bees. <laughs> oh my god. That bees. Yeah, it's just bees. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> that movie hurt me so bad. You know what? My girl walked so that Simon Birch could run. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, Weird Al, I don't need. I don't need. I, don't need, I, don't need I think Weird Al would be real fun. I, I kind of love it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I see it, a haunted house so much as a, a house. <laughs> yeah, just exactly. Run. Come in my house. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Weird Al story. Speaking of uh, pirates of the Caribbean, pirates of Penzance. Nope, President of the United States of America. Yes, uh, pirates of uh, Penzance. Yep, we got there. We got when there. They, when when uh, when we got to tour with those guys when they went when they had their LA show, um, he came out and did more than a feeling with them. So their encore with accordion and singing. And I was like, I heard that was going to be happening during sound, when they were sound checking and he came out and was like sound checking. And like, I was like, Oh, that's disappointing. He didn't sing that good. This, oh. I was like, How, how's he going to hit this? And then, uh, man, it turned out he was just phoning it in for the, for the sound check because he nailed it live. He nailed more than a feeling like those crazy high notes. It was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> He had a a video. Blowing his hair the whole time. It was amazing. There's a video of him, Alice Cooper, and I forget who the third one was. I know Johnny Depp was there singing Come Together. Yeah. So, oh, oh, or was it Steven Tyler? Steven Tyler, Weird Al, and Alice Cooper singing Come Together. Ooh, brilliant. Brilliant. Wow. And, and also, sorry for the My Girl spoilers, people yeah. in the comments. Okay. <laughs> 30 Have years later. later. <laughs> yeah. Our bad. Are bad. All right. Just look at the color tones. A kid's gonna die in that movie. It's yeah. really obvious. <laughs> like we movie. all know what happens at the end of beaches just based on like the the, the establishing shots. Mm. Look mm, at that's the sun. It's a little bit Vaseline. -y. I'm gonna cry. Just yeah. start crying now. All right. Yeah. Here's the next one. Yeah, Would you rather? One dies. Ooh. Have the band dress up as Back to the Future characters for Halloween, or have the band dress up as doctors from Doctor Who? See the time traveling element here. Yeah, no, I mean I'm way into it. Uh, back to the future. Okay, and who who would you who would you want to be? Are you a Doc Brown? Are you a Marty? Are you a Biff? Biff? Mm -hmm. Biff? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that. I, uh, uh, geez, who would I be? Or are you George? Really? I might be George McFly. We love no, him. wait, no, that doesn't make sense. He doesn't. Ah, I just rain. <laughs> like, no, I don't think I. Uh, geez, I don't know. I guess like, I guess I'd be Marty McFly because he's short. Okay, great, great choice. We love Marty. <laughs> Marty's an icon. Okay, Danica, next one. All Would right. You Would you rather do a cover of Dance Magic Dance Dance, or Magic Dance. Or Chili Down? <laughs> Nobody wants to do Chili Down. Those, the, the, those fire guys are creepozoidal. <laughs> I do like that. I, I like their performance, but like they, that part weirds me out. I think it maybe because okay. it just weirded me out as a kid and it's just still like, Did why do their it? heads come off and why are they okay with it? And like, they're okay with their heads coming off. <laughs> Just see, and then like switching heads. It's just, it's not. It's I'm really in sexy mechanic. for nightmare fuel. Thanks, Jim Henson. But, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that package follows us around the whole. <laughs> right. Dance magic dance. Great choice. Thank you. Living for it. Okay, here's the next one. Would you rather write an album with the songs based on other condiments? So, but not about whipped cream, or write a Ludo Christmas. Write album? a Ludo Christmas album. Are you crazy? Of course, it would. Okay. I really wanted to hear ketchup, but okay. <laughs> I think Sorry, there, I needs hear ketchup. Be, there needs to be like a Ludo Halloween album and a Ludo Christmas album. And then there needs to be the War of Thanksgiving oh. mm -hmm. where we all like battle against the disease of the in-betweensies where you don't know which is which on Thanksgiving. Okay. Are we close to death? Are we close to the North Pole? What's happening? And just... <laughs> have a massacre of themes see jim they see you know tim burton bless his heart he did it in like a cute sort of combo -y way i i want i want it i want it to be like just just gooey and gross just mm. spilling spilling concepts all over each other more goo yes okay. more, much more goo anyway this is a would you rather yeah okay christmas album it is all right danica would you rather uh, do a Ludo music video with the band depicted as Muppets or a Ludo music video in the style of Japanese animation? Uh, Muppets? A good friend of ours works on Sesame Street. <gasps> Casey. So, That's so uh, cool. Like, friend who's been on it a lot recently. Yeah. Really? Yeah, our buddy Is Alex. He friends with Kermit? <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you that. 
Why <laughs> there's so many? <laughs> yeah, that'd be so cool if we knew Kermit. Well, Very good. I'm doing a convention in a couple weeks. Shout out to GalaxyCon Columbus. And we actually have Steve Whitmire, who was Kermit. So that'll be fun. Oh. So maybe I could say I am friends with Kermit. That's fantastic. Know. Next time we have you on, we'll have this conversation again. Okay, we got two more. <laughs> Would you rather perform with the first musician whose album you bought or perform with the first musician who you saw perform live? Uh, I'm going to go with the first one. And who was it? Boys to Men. Yes! Boys to Men. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. So the other one, though, like, would be pretty great. That, was, that would have been Bruce Springsteen, 1986, the arena, St. Louis, Missouri. Oh. Yeah. I mean, like, pretty solid. I don't know. I just kind of want to stand near Boys to Men and be like, <laughs> you fit no. right in. <laughs> can, I put my, can I put my ear against your chest while you sing? Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they still got it, too. They still got it. Sounds so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. Sure. Danica, All right. you want to take it home? One? All right. The most important question we ask Would you rather be a reverse centaur or a reverse merman? <laughs> You know why this is funny is because the most interesting thing about a human would be the top part because that's where the brain is. So mm -hmm. that's why this is funny. Um, also the uh, fantastic drawings. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, there's there's a thousand ways for that to be awesome and these are both awesome. Uh, uh, every time. I gotta say though, I gotta say that <clears throat> the lower body, the human lower body instead of the fish lower body is really killing the the, the hydrodynamics. It really doesn't make sense because that's kind of the engine of the fish. I think it would suck. Mm -hmm. I would totally be cool walking around like myself and then everyone's like, like, like hoofing somebody in the face, mm -hmm. like biting an apple, biting the crap out of an apple. So I'll be a reverse centaur. Great choice. Very good choice. I love it. Perfect. Well, you did great. You got them all right. Um, we had a shout out. Uh, we were trying to have Clown Vish join us tonight, but he's oh. a very busy, busy clown and could not. Um, but he wants to send his love to you and was telling me how much he just loves you and appreciates you guys. H how did you meet Clown Vish? How did this come to be? We wanted to do in 2019 some very, very intensive theme shows that would require an opener to play along with a continuous, fully immersive mid 1980s narrative where we were having uh, a sort of Stranger Things monster convention in the woods that then at the next show, those monsters all got together and attacked the prom. And that then at the next show, all the heroes led by Batman went to Transylvania to destroy Dracula. And it involved the opener being held hostage by monsters and all these other things and like playing along with that narrative over the course of the entire weekend. And our good friend, Bert, uh, who helps us in St. Louis was like, you know, who would totally be down? Clown. <laughs> I was like, I was like, tell it. We were like, tell us more. And, and Tim Tommy was like, you mean the guy who's like half clown, half Elvis? And I was like, <laughs> tell me more. And then, like, we, and it was, it was just fantastic and it was great. And he, he played along and he was fantastic. And I don't know, it was just, I don't know, it was pretty fantastic. He's, he's a lovely, lovely clown. Yes, I obsess. We love, we love, we love. Um, before we do wrap it up, people in the comments asking chance of new music or possibly a tour? A, yes, B, But we'll see what happens with A, and then maybe a little less, not so much on the no on the B. Okay. Okay. Oh, you want me to say yes instead of the 97 <laughs> word answer I gave? You were just giving the answer for the definition of a ring pop. What? Yes, <laughs> exactly. I love that you're just holding Paul Rubens this whole time. I'm, he was just sitting there staring at me, and now I'm just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I, was sale, I had that entire movie memorized 
starting from that interaction with Francis Buxton. Um, a weird, there was a summer when we watched it every day, my sisters and I. Wow. Do you want to hear something really cursed? Because I can pull the thing. Yeah. Let's see if it... <laughs> that's not the way. Oh, oh. oh that's God, bad. It's, it's like the crusty the clown doll that tries to kill Homer. Oh, God. He used to sing his song. America's got talent. Oh my God. Well, uh, before we do release oh, you back my. into the world, any final thoughts you want to leave us with here? Uh, my goal was to overstand my welcome. Nailed it. Nice. Thanks I don't, for having me. <laughs> I, think you, I think we can stay for another oh, hour. It's yeah. 63 minutes. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like the, the those who are like, just like normal fans of your show are like, all right, all right. <laughs> you filled it up. There you go. They're all still here. All right. we, we've been very consistent with people watching. So it's. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up. Um, oh, yeah. Once again, oh, yeah. Halloween. Uh -huh. too. There are Bryce. still tickets available for Sunday, the Apocalypse oh. Show. Get that. Are, well, but I did a total bad job. First show on the 28th is. Mad Scientist Convention. My daughter is going as Rick Sanchez. <gasps> yes. She's 10 years old. Yes. I don't know what happened. October 29th, <laughs> this Saturday show is Prehistoric Castaway. You live in a cave in a prehistoric time trying to survive. You're basically a cave person. Nice. Uh, and the last one, the one there's still tickets for, the Apocalyptic Ball, Zombies and Skeletons Welcome. Whoa! Ooh. Someone, please go as Tank Girl. Oh my God, please! <gasps> you, you can take that, Andrew, if you want to be Tank Girl. Um, all right, so <laughs> we're gonna go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up for uh, the next however long. Uh, somehow this is still going. Okay, like I said, <laughs> next Tuesday, Terrifier Two. We have Damian Leone, David Howard Thornton, and we have Lauren Lavera. And then uh, Thursday, we have Maddie Riley, who is the bassist for the wonderful Avril Lavigne. We also have Matthew Patrick Davis, who is in the new movie, The Barbarian. If you haven't seen it, it is another excellent, scary movie. Perfect time of the year. Go see it. We also have Ricky from Ice Nine Kills. We have Gary Anthony Williams from Whose Line Is It Anyway? We have wrestling superstar Al Snow. We are welcoming back once again for like his 20th time, Casey Jost from Impractical <laughs> Jokers. And uh, Andrew, whatever you're doing, I'm living for it. it is, that was <laughs> so brilliant. Um, thank you so much. This has just been such a joy. 10 more days. I, I could be more possibly excited for you and your fellow band members and everyone that actually gets to go. I'm so incredibly jealous. I promise I will try to make it out for next year. So that's, that, that's my promise. Me and Dan you thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Oh my gosh. We'll see you Bye. guys soon. Be safe, everybody. Bye. Bye.